All right. Now, throughout my childhood, I've been attacked by all sorts of animals. I mean, we're talking anything from, like, a rabid raccoon behind a Long John Silver's to my neighbor's giant Rottweiler that uh, tried to murder me in cold blood. I've had a ton of violent encounters and plenty of close calls, to say the least. But one of the most traumatizing animal attacks that I've been a part of had to have been from my friend David's pet cat. Now, this cat was a Siamese cat named Cotton, and like a lot of Siamese cats, his ass was cross-eyed as hell. That cat was so cross-eyed, I swear he could, like, see other dimensions and shit. And not only was he cross-eyed, but this cat was mean as hell. I seen him commit felonious assault on many a child throughout my life. He'd, like, go out in the street and, like, trip a little kid on a skateboard. If you weren't paying attention, he'd fucking burn your ass with a lit cigarette. Ah, what the hell? Hell, one time, me and my friend Steven were playing Pokemon cards at David's house, and this cat just walked up and ate his fucking holographic Mr. Mime. Now, first off, do you know how important a holographic Mr. Mime was to a child in 1999? Steven's ass would have rather lost, like, a grandmother or a fucking kidney instead of that goddamn Pokemon card. You bet your ass days later he's, like, sifting through cat shit. All that's left of Mr. Mime's ass is, like, a crumpled up 40 HP piece of cardboard and shit. Ah, oh, god damn it, look how they massacred my boy! To hell with your evil ass cat! And not to mention that cat was volatile as hell. He could attack your ass unprovoked at any moment. So when we were at David's house, he didn't go near Cotton. You tried to keep your voice down while he was in the room. Hell, if he fucking farted too loud, that cat would Freddy Krueger your ass six ways to Sunday. And that went double for me because Cotton seemed like he had some sort of personal vendetta against my little ass. Which, I mean, I have no idea why. I followed all the proper precautions. I didn't go near him. I kept my voice down. If I had to fucking fart, I stuck my ass out of the nearest window. But it didn't matter. <laughs> He attacked me regardless. It got so bad, when I'd come home from David's house, my parents would be like, holy hell, look, I don't know if you can file a restraining order against a household pet, but uh, maybe you should give it a try. And like I mentioned before, Cotton was cross-eyed as hell. So you didn't know if he was looking at you, or your friend next to you, or if he was looking out the fucking window. You didn't know who that cat was about to target. Are you staring at my goofy-ass eyeball? That, no, please don't hurt us. I'm not talking to you guys, I'm talking about that kid across the street, goddammit. Ah, uh, what the fuck? Now, one thing that I failed to mention about Cotton the Cat is that his ass would have seizures from time to time. That's right, apparently cats can have epilepsy. That's a real thing. His ass was diagnosed by a veterinarian and everything. Oh, yeah, your cat's gonna have seizures and flip-flop around like a fucking bluegill out of water. He'll be fine, though. Just keep him away from, like, hardwood floors and probably the staircase. Now, these seizures that Cotton would have never really seemed to bother him all that much. He would just kind of, like, spaz out for a minute or two, and then he'd just pop up and walk away like nothing ever happened. But these seizures would happen all of the time. They happened so frequently, it wasn't even like a big deal to us. It was just like a common occurrence in David's house. We'd be sitting on the couch watching TV. Cotton's ass would be over there like. Dude, turn your TV up. I can hardly hear Boy Meets World over your loud ass spastic cat. Well, fuck you, Mr. Feeney. I'm not going to detention. How about that? <laughs> Well, it was during one of these epileptic episodes where I almost met my untimely demise to Cotton the Cat. You see, it was late one night when me and Steven were staying the night at David's house and we're up in David's room playing Streets of Rage on the Sega Genesis, you know, getting our asses beat by the fat flamethrower guys on stage four, naturally. Well, all of a sudden, we hear a very familiar sound coming from downstairs and that sound is followed by something smashing on the floor. So we go down to David's living room to investigate, and what we find is a broken lamp and Cotton the Cat's epileptic ass laying on the floor. Apparently he was laying on a table, had a seizure, knocked the lamp over, no big deal. The only problem was, Cotton's ass is just laying there, not moving at all. Now, my first thought is, holy hell, he's dead. Cotton's ass finally fucking rattled his brains into mashed potatoes. So we're all standing there thinking we're looking at a deceased household pet. Everybody's traumatized as hell. Well, everybody except for Steven's ass, that is. Yeah, that's what you get, you fucking Mr. Mind murdering piece of shit. Well, suddenly, Cotton rises up, stares directly at me. I know that because his eyes are no longer fucking cross-eyed. I don't know if his ass shook his eyeballs straight or what during the seizure, but what I can tell you is that his ass leapt at me like a goddamn Ninja Turtle, and then he clung himself onto me like a fucking koala bear on a eucalyptus tree. Now, real quick, it's important to note that uh, I don't draw ears on my characters usually because I'm a lazy piece of shit, but because of the nature of this attack, I'm gonna put a fucking ear on my character. Because what happens next is Cotton's ass ends up clawing into my fucking earlobe. 
And he didn't just scratch it. No, he gets his claw stuck in it. Now, I don't know if you've ever had your ear pierced by a cat litter encrusted claw before, but I really do not recommend it. I start running around David's living room in a panic while nine pounds of fucking Siamese cat hangs off my ear. David's ass is over there like, heel cotton, heel goddammit, stop it. Steven's flinging fucking couch pillows at it, trying to save my life. Eventually, Cotton's ass leaps off of me. I uh, couldn't tell you exactly how or when, because I'm pretty sure I blacked out over the whole fucking ordeal. All I know is I end up fucking covered in my own blood, looking like I stormed the beaches of Normandy and shit. My fucking ear, thankfully, still somewhat attached to the side of my head. Cotton's just sitting on the couch, smoking a cigarette and shit. Yeah, well, next time I'll reservoir dog that bitch right off the side of your head. I'll disfigure a child. I'm not afraid of jail. I go home the next day, and my parents are like, Jesus Christ, Holyfield, what the hell happened to your ear? I don't want to talk about it, but I'm going to press charges, and I'm definitely filing that fucking restraining order. BruceDude.com